So I played tennis in, in growing up and in a small little area of Montana and um, ended up going to um, a small D3 school in, in the Tacoma, Seattle area. And, um, you know, just been in, in my life forever, even if, when I tried not to. And um, like I, I tried after college to kind of do the corporate thing and the office thing. <laughs> and I was horrible. I bounced off the walls. I was... I was I was just really wasn't very good or meant to be in the the grind and so I ended up moving to Central Oregon and that's where I met my wife and my family and tennis found me literally found me so uh, the coach found saw us hitting and said hey here's the path and kind of rolled with it from there on August 8th 2004 Gonzaga University hired DJ Grule to take over the women's tennis program uh, you know it was a couple years before I I entertained the idea previous to, you know, to when, when Coach Pivor, before he came, um, I entertained the idea of, of running kind of the whole tennis program, and, and that, that just, they were down the path, and it just wasn't right timing, and then um, when it opened up, it kind of reached out to me, and um, I, you know, I, I, I built the women's program, or I was a big part of the women's program for so long, and, and it was my you know, blood, sweat, and tears. Those blood, sweat, and tears paid off when he coached Sophie Whittle to the 2018 ITA Fall National Championships. The family environment and just holding us all accountable, we always knew that he was going to be there to challenge us in everything that we did, and I think that that's why I grew so much as a player. He always kind of had these, um, he would just push us each and every day extra. And sometimes you didn't even know that you needed that, but you were just had so much trust in him that you just went to work each and every day. And he always said that our goal at practice is to make the person to the left and the right of us better. With Sophie's success and DJ's drive, the 2019 women's team posted the highest ranking in program history at 39, ending the season at 51st in the nation. Sophie is also the highest ranked player in men's or women's of all time at number one. Coach that I dealt with in, in Oregon uh, coached women and, and kind of entered me into that spot and it just kind of went that way, um, you know, and then I think fate intervened. I have two daughters, um, so I, you know, I've, I was just kind of surrounded by females for a long, long time, and I, I loved it. They're challenging. They work hard. There's, um, the women's game is amazing. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's great. So it was, it was just kind of a, a spot. I, I think my big strength is I just correlate with people and so you know to me when the men's job opened or the men's position opened up I, it wasn't different I just had to alter what it is it's still individuals trying to do the best they possibly can and, and I'm trying to help them along that path. He had a saying where once you build this trust with him you'll have it forever and that couldn't have been more accurate the trust that I felt with him as a person and also as a coach was just something I've never had before from a coach. And I feel that my relationship with him over the years grew so much and I'm just so grateful for my experience with him. DJ Grule was named the head coach of the men's program on June 1st, 2021, after spending over a decade on the women's side. You know, I was kind of ready for a change. I didn't want to leave Gonzaga. I had some opportunities, but I think um, being able to, to not not empty my drawers and move my house and have a new job and a new lease for the maybe the second half of my career is going to be pretty amazing. With the switch from men's to women's, Grulé faced the challenge of gaining players' trust and getting them to buy in to his system. I think the challenge was not to overreact, not to over prove myself. The guys with with good reason kind of came in with with a guard, you know, being a coach that had established himself as a women's coach and coming into a men's program, there was some you know, hesitation, but for me I think the challenge was not to to try to prove it right away other than to really listen to the culture, listen to the guys, see what they needed, see what the team 
kind of had and, and not try to just force myself into um, proving. Junior Matthew Hollingworth was one of those players who was trying to win over. And helping him and his doubles partner Sasha get to the regional championship helped build that trust. Gonzaga, it was over the summer holiday break, so the tennis the tennis team go home, and we spend our summers playing at home and, and competing in our own countries. So um, he called me up personally because I, I was doing my own thing when he told the the rest of the team and. I think, yeah, it, it was really, it, it was good to hear from him and we hadn't really heard much about what was going on and we we didn't realize the decision was going to be made um, as quick as it was. Uh, I think he helped us a lot because he was really open to listening. I think um, personally I am a very analytical player and so I kind of um, let my mind run wild a little bit sometimes and he, he listened and he directed uh, me in the bits that he thought were good and then and then pulled me back on the bits that he thought were maybe not correct and he just really gave Sasha and I the space to flourish and, and really build a relationship and I think you know in another thing that he deserves a lot of credit for as well is at the start like Sasha and I on, on paper were, were like a, a, a good doubles pair but then the first couple of practices we did together we struggled a little bit and so but he, he stuck with it and he stuck with what his gut instinct and he stuck with what we were saying and, and I think you know, we had one practice where we broke through and then we went into our first tournament and, and won our first tournament that we played with together and, and really went on from there. And I think, um, yeah, he was, ju he was just there for us, gave us the space to flourish and, and gave us the direction, really, really helped us focus our minds and what we were trying to do. Matthew and Sasha would go on to become the 25th ranked doubles team in the nation in early 2022, the highest ranking in singles or doubles in men's tennis history. What I knew, I, I think I, I remember a couple individuals when working with the guys where you can kind of see their eyes and their brains kind of click when they're like, ah, this guy maybe knows what he's doing. Uh, maybe they still think that to this day. But uh, ultimately, I think it took patience uh, and, and trust in, in who I was, um, who I am, and, um, and trust in the guys. I mean, I challenged them and, and challenged them that this was not a – a me doing this it's an us doing this thing uh when he first came out from women's to men's i think um we all had a, a lot of respect for what he'd done on the women's side he'd uh, established himself here as a, as a coach as a um as a member of the community and as a well-liked person so i think on that on that side there was a lot of respect but i think there may have been some hesitancy as he maybe admits that he didn't have a lot of experience coaching men's tennis and and as much as we play the same sport as women's, a lot of the nuances of the game are very different. This was an individual success by Matthew and Sasha, as the men's team peaked at 46th in the nation in 2022, the highest in men's program history, and 16 spots higher than the previous rank. Um, it's, uh, it's just been kind of a passion of mine. Uh, it's an amazing sport, it's a lifelong sport that I think can teach so many lessons and, and Gonzaga has been just a great fit for me um, and my family and Spokane's been amazing. It's a pathway to so many things in life that, that it's challenging, it's unbelievably difficult, it's, it's, you have to be dedicated to be, to excel at it at, at, at a high level. It, it's given me so much, it's, it's amazing. Um, I love it. I love the sport. You know, it's funny because I don't play, uh, maybe because I'm old or I'm um, decrepit but uh, it's it's a sport that's um, that's in my blood some of the lessons that he's taught me are the days aren't going to be easy we're going to have to work each and every day whether that's on ourselves whether that's as a in the classroom as a teammate um, and like we all go through these challenges each and every day and some of my toughest years were in college and like most other people, and he just showed me how to prioritize my well-being and still be able to compete my highest level, and I'm super thankful for that. I think he's taught us how to be good members of a community and, and really um, invest ourselves into something that's bigger than ourselves. He's, he's taught us how to trust others and how to um, take ownership for our own actions, but also trusting others that they have our back and really 
helping us build relationships with others and he's really fostered that environment for us. Hope they know, hope they, they realize um, how we made them feel and how we made them feel valued and how who they are and what they contribute no matter where they play, if they play, is valuable and has a, a lasting place in um, in the history of our program and, and the school and the university and athletics. Um, you know, I think back, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, man, I, I, it's so fun to think back about all my players, whether they played one or whether they didn't play at all. Um, that, that they make this story go um, and, I, and I hope all our players understand that they're a vital part to, to not just their story but everybody else's story that they they come in contact with and, and I think that that really creates that that daunting task of being a good person <laughs> and doing things the right way um, that's what I hope I mean we talk about it all the time that you know, dealing with an adversity of missing a plane or canceling a flight or a bad loss or a bad match is nothing compared to when your family needs you when they're sick or when, um, you know, I, I kind of use the adage all the time because I've been there when you have a two-year-old baby that won't stop crying in the middle of the night and what are you going to do? Um, so I, I just want them to know they're tougher than, than they think and that they're capable. Yeah, I'm really proud of you guys. I'm proud of you. Hi, I'm DJ Gerlay. I'm the head men's tennis coach at Gonzaga University.